All right, so I got an absolutely wild clip here for you guys from Fox News on their show, The Five, where they were essentially making basically a pro-homeless argument and um, saying that the solution to people living out on the streets is to simply let them hit rock bottom, and so they will magically be able to just pick themselves up by their bootstraps and uh, bounce back. So let's just go ahead and watch this clip, and then I'll explain to you guys why this is absolutely delusional. On to the topic. Homeless encampments in liberal Los Angeles have a brand new amenity, working washing machines. Yes, it's true. Vagrants are setting up oversized tents and boasting about how they can steal water and electricity from the city in order to power their own street laundry service. And in California's other beleaguered liberal city, San Francisco, a widely criticized plan to build a single $1.7 million public toilet could be going down the drain. Governor Gavin Newsom threatening to withhold the funds because of the exorbitant price. Jesse's fiscal responsibility. Yeah, that was a big primetime victory because we've been pushing hard against this toilet. Yep, I it's going to be three years to complete a single stall public restroom, uh, not made of gold. It is a regular toilet and it's costing about two million dollars. Outrageous. Outrageous. But we're going to get that cleaned up. Um, the situation in was it Los Angeles? Yeah. You have to let people hit rock bottom because then they bounce back up. Democrats want to make rock bottom comfortable. Yeah, stay at rock bottom, you know, put a washer dryer, put a put wine a fridge in there. Yeah, do whatever you need to do. Spread out. Spread yourself out. That's the problem. You're actually hurting people by letting them fester in squalor. Yeah. Don't sit there and let them do this to you because you're not allowed to sleep on public property and you're not allowed to sleep on private property. So get them the hell out of there. One of the huge problems with the law in some of these places, Judge, is that they allow tents. And tents means more permanent. Basically, you're basically going to sit there. Okay, so, I mean, there was just so much to say about that. First of all, just like the underlying premise of this segment is honestly just disgusting, but also doesn't really make sense in terms of proposing a legitimate solution in any way, shape, or form, right? So, I mean, the way that they talk about this is as if, like, people just simply want to be sleeping out on the streets or in tents and that they want to have to, you know, use a, a washing machine that's literally parked on the sidewalk and, you know, have to uh, uh, use that as their only way to be able to get consistently clean clothing. I mean, they act as if, like, people are just loving this, that that's just, you know, the best option. And that's what they wanted to, you know, end up having to do. No, of course not. And, you know, I mean, at the beginning of the segment, right, they're referencing the washing machines and saying how, you know, all of these liberal policies and all of these uh, big cities are uh, basically making it so comfortable for these people to be living out on the streets that they don't have an incentive to bounce back, right? In the words of, uh, you know, whatever his name is, this uh, this commentator right here, you know, saying that, um, uh, saying that people just need to hit rock bottom in order to bounce back. How? How? I mean, what is the follow-up to that? Bounce back how? Okay, you have step one, let them hit, hit rock bottom as if, you know, sleeping out on a tent and having to use a washing, ma washing machine on the sidewalk as if that isn't already rock bottom, saying somehow you need to make their lives even worse than they already are, let them hit, hit rock bottom so that they can bounce back. And what is step two there? I mean, how do you expect people who are at rock bottom to be able to bounce back? Is it just like, oh, they need to stop being lazy, they need to get some jobs, they need to, you know, be more productive members of society? Like, what exactly is your proposal here? There was none. The only proposal that he actually put forward, I think this is Jesse Waters here, if I'm not mistaken, the only pro proposal that he actually put forward there is just criminalizing tents, I guess, in these cities or criminalizing homelessness, which just means what? Spending more money, more resources on a uh, state police force to go and brutalize homeless people and, you know, make it illegal for them to be sleeping where they're forced to sleep out on the sidewalks in these tents and uh, put them where? I mean, what is your solution? He says, you know, we need to move them out of here. We need to get them out of here because it's illegal to be sleeping out on the sidewalk. Where the fuck do you expect them to go if they don't have access to housing? Sleeping out on the street, sleeping in tents, that is literally their only fucking option option that our completely broken capitalist hellscape has provided for these people. So they don't even have any actual solutions other than, I guess, throwing these people in jail. But I mean, just to give you a little bit more details in terms of like, how we ended up in this situation where we have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people who are either homeless or borderline homeless in this country. I mean, number one, I recommend you go and watch this uh, great video that was put together by friend of the show, Second Thought, on how uh, the country of Finland has essentially eradicated homelessness using some of the uh, approaches to uh, policy that they have in that country. Go watch this video. It's a great breakdown on it. But just to give you some of the rundown here, right? So they say Finland ends homelessness and provides shelter for all in need. So they did something radical here, okay? Crazy concept, I know. But basically, they used what's called a housing-first approach 
to the situation with homelessness, okay? And what that means is you first address the core root of the problem that these people do not have access to stable housing. That's step number one. And the way that we have treated it in this society is completely backwards to this approach. And it's obviously been failing, right? So in Finland, you have this housing first concept where first people who are unhoused, if they're homeless, they're sleeping out on the streets, they don't have stable housing, you give them access to public housing, step number one. Then you go about the process of uh, providing uh, job opportunities to them, give them a little bit of economic stability and eventually, you know, allow them to be able to go and be more independent. Uh, number two, if they are addicted to any, you know, drugs or any other substances, you provide them free and accessible addiction services so that they are actually able to get clean and then, you know, move on to uh, potentially getting a job or, you know, finding some sort of stability in that sense. And um, you also provide them with mental health care for those that need it, right? So those are some of the things that you would do after you provide the housing. The housing part is step one. And um, the way that we approach it here in the United States is basically the complete opposite of that. We have this continuum of care approach is what it is called. And basically we put up all of these barriers, all of these, uh, um, all of these things that are preventing people from getting access to subsidized housing before they meet certain requirements, right? Unless you get a job, unless you get clean off of these drugs first, right? Unless you, uh, you know, meet the standards that are set up by the government. And then maybe some of you might be provided with subsidized housing in one way or another. And usually you have to go through again, a complex web of like, first you start out in like, you know, public housing, with uh, its communal living, living spaces, then maybe eventually a small percentage of people might end up getting subsidization for individual housing, et cetera, et cetera. It's the complete opposite of the approach that countries who have had wild, massive success in addressing homelessness have used, right? Because how the fuck do you expect people to be able to get off drugs um, when we don't have universal access to addiction services? How are they going to be able to um, you know, improve their mental health situation if they don't have access to consistent health care? It's completely unaffordable for a wide majority of the American people especially considering that they don't have housing, right? It makes no fucking sense, but that's how we have chosen to approach this issue. And again, it's been an abject failure. So maybe we could look to other countries like Finland and um, start to use some of the approaches that they have had in that country. Now, again, there's another problem here, which is that in the United States, we simply do not treat housing as a fundamental human right, which we absolutely should, and which, you know, among the international community, we've actually signed on to international documents saying that we believe that housing is human right. But the fact of the matter is, in this country, we treat it as a commodity. We treat it as a uh, investment vehicle for wealthy Wall Street bankers and for, you know, generally wealthy people in the United States. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, you look at the data, this is something that is completely unattainable for a wide swath of the American public, right? Owning a house, having stable housing, having a job, a family, etc. That is something that is pitched as part of a, a core part of the American dream, right? And the American dream in this sense, especially as related to housing, is completely fucking dead at this point. I mean, you look at the data again here from CNBC, they say full-time minimum wage workers cannot afford rent anywhere in the United States. Okay, I brought up this statistic before. There is not a single county in the entire United States where a minimum wage worker can afford a rental for themselves and a couple of their family members. It's not fucking possible, okay? And, and on what one bedrooms as well, it's literally not possible. So the problem is, number one, the commodification of housing, the fact that we have, you know, um, investors that are buying up wide swaths of our housing stock and then price gouging people for it, right? As they uh, point out here from Pew, they say investors bought a quarter of homes sold last year driving up rents okay so we have corporate consolidation of the housing market treating it as an investment treating it as a commodity instead of as a fundamental human right driving up the cost making it more unaccessible for wider uh, portions of the american people and um on the back end of that not only are you getting price gouged by corporations who actually own huge portions of the housing stock in this country but you're also getting fucked on the back end because wages are not nearly enough to actually be a living wage and so what this means is that you know either you're going to maybe be able to barely scrape by and afford some sort of a dinky apartment if you are somebody who's at, at minimum wage or close to minimum wage. And um, you're also going to have to be cutting into other parts of your budget like food and uh, transportation, etc., and make sacrifices on that end. You know, actually like people going hungry for multiple, you know, uh, meals at a time because they have to cut into their food budgets or other budgets as well in order to just be able to put a, a roof over their head temporarily. And so, I mean, you have this situation where you're getting fucked on the front end by the lack of living wages in this country by corporations. And then you're also getting fucked on the back end by those same corporations who are buying up the housing stock and price gouging the American people. I mean, this is the problem with having a commodified housing system, right? This is the problem with not having those same programs that they have in other countries like Finland, where they approach this as a human right, right? And, and keep in mind, I mean, even if you want to take a conservative approach to this thought process, right? Because what would Jesse Waters or any of those other, you know, the five Fox hosts suggest that people do who are homeless? They always just turn around and say, oh, well, you know, you're just being 
being a lazy bum, go get yourself a job, right? Well, as pointed out here from uh, the University of Chicago, they say employment alone isn't enough to solve homelessness. So, you know, disregarding even the, you know, the, the underpinnings here that it is damn near impossible if you already are homeless and you're living out on the streets to actually be able to go get a job, right? How the fuck is somebody supposed to go apply for a job, be able to show up, uh, be able to be presentable if they don't even have a house in the first place, okay? So disregarding even that difficulty here, if you actually look at the data, they say about 40% of unhoused individuals in the United States had earnings from formal employment, according to new findings from their study at the uh, University of Chicago. So almost half of people who are a part of how we define the homeless population or the unhoused population in the United States, they did have employment, okay? So the idea that like, oh, it's just so simple, you just need to stop being lazy, you need to go get a job, a large portion of homeless people in this country are employed, okay? And clearly that's not enough because again, if you're having this type of a situation where rent is just completely unaffordable because corporations are price gouging us for this, this, uh, this human right here, then how the fuck are you ex supposed to expect people to just simply pull themselves up by their bootstraps, go find a job, and be able to get stable housing from that. It's just not legitimately possible. You have to address this from a systemic level. And the first step in that is, again, treating this as a fundamental human right instead of as a commodity and providing public housing for people um, across the board. No questions asked. You provide a housing-first approach instead of setting up all of those barriers. And believe it or not, using, again, a conservative lens of analysis on this issue, if you just want to talk about the economics of it, right? You go back to this clip, they're complaining about how much the fucking... I don't know, public toilet or whatever program that was uh, put forward in LA. Oh, it's going to cost a couple million dollars, whatever. I don't know the specific details of that story. Maybe it was a dumb plan. But the point is, if you actually look at the data here, and Finland was a perfect case study example of this, it is literally cheaper, okay? It is an economic benefit to us to solve homelessness from this housing first approach than it is to continue forcing people to sleep out on the streets. You actually save money in the long run, even according for, or even accounting for the expenditures on providing that public housing, providing the addiction services, providing the mental health care, etc. You save money in the long run because again, you're not having those same police interactions. You're not having to waste money and resources on that. You're saving money on you know hospital visits that people have to uh, go to the hospital on a regular basis because they don't have access to any health care in a legitimate or consistent way, okay? You're saving money by doing this. There's no justification whatsoever for not providing housing as a human right in this country, not politically, not morally, not economically, even if you are a fucking conservative, okay? So their idea of this is literally just to brutalize homeless people as much as possible and then tell them to lift themselves up by their bootstraps, okay? It's completely fucking delusional. They have no legitimate policy solutions to address this issue in a meaningful capacity. But, you know, again, there's other aspects of this as well, right? It's not just the cor corporate consolidation of uh, uh, housing recently, especially. This has escalated significantly over the last couple of years, especially over the pandemic. But it's also shit like this. I mean, our housing system in this country has gotten so commodified to the point where we now have algorithms that are basically just uh, uh, using AI programs to determine um, how much housing should be. And believe it or not, they've set up these algorithms that a large portion of these uh, investment firms are using now. They've set up these algorithms to just completely jack up the prices arbitrarily beyond what even, you know, uh, wealth managers and even some of these uh, investment companies would have been doing. So, I mean, basically we have a housing market that is determined by algorithms that are specifically centered around returning maximum profits to shareholders instead of delivering affordable housing across the board to every American citizen. So, of course, this system is not going to fucking work and it's not going to be, you know, anything close to solving the issue of homelessness. Now, again, on the economics of this, because people say, oh my God, how are we going to afford to be able to use this housing first policy? How are we going to be able to afford to put roofs over all of these people's head and provide them, you know, with all of these different costs. Well, number one, again, it's actually cheaper in the long run to use that approach. But number two, we're already subsidizing housing. We're just doing it disproportionately for the wealthy in this country. So here from The Guardian, they say U.S. spends twice as much on tax break for the rich as on rent for the poorest. They say the U.S. spent $60 billion in 2015 on the mortgage interest deduction for wealthy homeowners, while just a quarter of those needing housing assistance received it. Okay, we're spending multiple times more more on tax breaks for wealthy homeowners than we are on actually addressing homelessness in this country, right? And keep in mind, you know, you can look at different various reports that have different estimates, but according to the uh, the uh, uh, Department of Housing here in the United States, it would only cost like roughly 20 or so billion dollars a year to completely eradicate homelessness in this country, okay? And we're providing 60 billion, okay, this is back in 2015, on just the mortgage interest deduction rate. Okay, so what are we really talking about here? I mean, again, 
you look at clips like that from Fox News, but this goes across the board in terms of how conservatives and even how many liberals approach the issue of homelessness and approach the issue of um, housing. I mean, basically all they want is to just push this issue aside. They just want to, you know, not have to walk down the street and see people living um, in squalor on the streets, you know, living in tents, etc. They just don't want to see it. They want to push it out of their eyes view and then pretend as if that has fucking solved the problem. And another point that needs to be made here is that the problem in a lot of these big cities, especially ones like LA, New York City, etc., the main problem with why homelessness is not actually being addressed in a meaningful capacity is not because of like radical left-wing socialist housing policies or something like that. It's because these cities are mostly run by corporate Democrats who serve these gigantic corporations who have massive investments in housing. And they wouldn't dare to actually approach this in a housing first way. They wouldn't dare to actually approach this in a way that could potentially damage the profit margins of these wealthy housing investors. Okay, that's the core problem here is that you have Republicans in a lot of these different states and cities. You have Democrats in a lot of these different states and cities that serve the interests of corporate America. They serve the interests of the wealthy landlords. They don't serve the interests of actually addressing homelessness, right? So if you want to go attack liberals in these big cities, fine, have at it. I'll be right there with you criticizing them. But the criticism there is one from the left if it's going to be substantive. The criticism there is not one from the right to say that, oh my God, these, these Democrats in these big cities are going way too far with all of these policies and it's making, you know, being homeless and living out on the streets way too comfortable so that people no longer have an incentive to lift themselves up by their bootstraps and go and, you know, stop being a lazy bum and, and getting a job and then being being able to afford all of these other things. It's just completely fucking delusional. All of these conservatives have no legitimate plans that they have put forward in order to get people into housing, in order to actually address this issue in a meaningful way. Again, the way that you do this is you follow the lead of other countries who have already begun the process of dramatically reducing homelessness, if not outright eradicating it in their countries. Follow the lead. We have the model. We understand the solutions that actually could be deployed to fix this problem at a core level. The problem here is capitalism. The problem here is the commodification of our housing market. The problem here is that we do not treat housing as a fundamental human right. We treat it as a wealthy investment vehicle for some of the wealthiest corporations and billionaires in this country. Everyone is saying good politic guy has the best politic. Believe me, no one does it like him. Believe me, everyone is saying...